Welcome to the action from Todoroki, match week 25 in J1. And our focus is on a meeting between two teams searching for a return to form. Both Kawasaki Frontale and Hokkaido Consadole Sapporo are in need of a result and performance to kickstart their campaigns. Frontale champions in four of the last six years and last season's runners-up have slipped to ninth in the table after three straight league defeats. They've not lost four in a row in all competitions since March of 2014. But they'll sense their chance of a return to winning ways tonight against their visitors from the north. And Sonole Sapporo arrive on an eight-match winless run in J1. Losing four of their last five, free scoring earlier in the season. They've now managed just one goal across their last five matches in League and Cup. Goals, though, are usually guaranteed when these two get together. Remarkably, the last three league meetings between them have each provided seven goals. Montale winning 4-3 at Comsa earlier this season when they last met in April, having lost by the same score in Sapporo in October. The last encounter here at Todoroki ended 5-2 in Fontale's favour in June of last year. Of the last 13 encounters in Kawasaki, home side have won 11 of them and lost only once, 2-0 in November of 2020. Incredible support for both sides inside this stadium. Wonderful scene being set ahead of kickoff. Disappointments this season for the Fontale fans, but they have proven that they can rise to the big occasion as they did by beating the champions F Marinos in the middle of July. They haven't won a league match since then. It was come quarter final to come in midweek at Alvarex Nagata. The full focus first on this one. Kawasaki Frontale and Consadole Sapporo have struggled to reach the expectations set for them this season. Both have had their moments without the consistency required to get to where they want to be. Both in real need of a lift at Todoroki tonight after their poor recent runs. Ninth against 13th is not what either of these clubs would have expected at this stage of this season. running out of time to get near their aspirations for the campaign which for Frontale was a title challenge that has significantly fallen short and Consa who finished in mid-table in the last few seasons 10th in three of the last four years had stated aims of pushing towards Champions League qualification this year okay. in that respect they too have not got close formalities almost at their conclusion so back in the city of Kawasaki where they were initially formed only in 1996 did they move north to Sapporo year after which Kawasaki Frontale first became professional Pants have crossed in recent seasons and has certainly tended to be eventful form of the early part of the campaign appears no more for concert Will this reunion with Frontale bring about a change of fortunes in front of goal let's have a look at the team news for you Kawasaki Frontale have made five changes from last week's loss at San Frecce Hiroshima including three of the back four Takuma Omenami returns from suspension at centre-back Shintaro Kuramaya is fit again after missing the last three matches and Asahi Sasaki makes only a fourth league start of the season. There are recalls as well for captain Kento Tashibanada, who's preferred in midfield to Tatsuki Seko, and notably for the veteran Yu Kobayashi up front. He hasn't featured in the last eight J1 games after a hamstring injury, 
and starts for just the third time in the top flight this term, replacing Shin Yamada with Leandro Damiao back on the bench. Today's referee is Takuto Okabe from Fukushima. His 10th J1 game of a 13th season at this level. That charge of Gambra Saka's win against Shannon Belmari a week ago. Sushi Kamimura has the VAR responsibilities in the booth. Four changes for concert from the 3-0 defeat at Kieto Sanga a week ago, including a debut in goal for Shun Takagi, signed last week from J2 side Oita Trinita, uh, brought in to face a former club in Fontale in place of Koki Otani. Sayababa makes just a third league start of the season. He's in for Toya Nakamura. Takuma Arano is recalled, and after coming off the bench in the last three games, there's a return to the starting lineup for Superchok Sarachat. Yota Aoki misses out, Yuki Kobayashi drops to the bench, so we're expecting a more advanced role for Yoshiaki Komai tonight. A real respect on the touchline. Two of J1's most experienced bosses in direct opposition in Toru Oniki and Misha Petrovic. We're set for the start then. Under the lights at Todoroki. Set in their change colours, all in the white. Play from right to left as we look at it in this first half. So who can stop their slide tonight? Kawasaki Frontale and Consadoli Sapporo each sense their opportunity to try and turn a corner as they kick off this contest at Todoroki. Three straight defeats. The J1 for Frontale. Without a win now for Consa in this division. Separated by four points and four places in the current standings going into the game. Just to remind you, the last three league meetings have each produced seven goals. And these two sides have got together. So not in the same sort of scoring form by any stretch of the imagination of earlier in the season, but they do remain the top scorers away from home in this division this year. 24 goals, three more than Vissel Kope. Coming into match week 25, they conceded the joint most on their travels in 27. Deep press right from the start here, that wasn't actually far away. Not quickly. Glimpse of goal here with Arano. His recall to the uh, starting lineup. Very much a regular in the 11 throughout the course of the campaign. He's left on the bench last week. He's uh, again heavily involved here, battling for the bouncing ball, a touch for Superchop, working it wider for Suga. That's a little unfortunate. Across the face of goal by Daki Suga. So Ryong will certainly claim he had the earlier one covered had he been required, but he didn't miss his post by much. And Yukobayashi in Frontale will be uh, relieved to have back fit and available again. He's been unused on the bench the last couple of games, having returned from a hamstring injury, hasn't played in the last eight matches, but he has made over 300 appearances in this division for Toro Oniki's team. It's 14th season with them now, at the age of 35, only his third start of this year in J1. Could be central to the story. The offside flag is up against him. The season with a fractured foot turned in March. Scored a couple of times already this year. Four time title winner with them. Player capped 14 times by Japan.
heavily involved in the early exchanges. It's another one club man born in Sapporo, came up through the youth ranks with concert. Now in a 14th season with their senior side. Taking the armband with Hiroki Nizawa. Again, left amongst the substitutes, he's the club captain. Hasn't been a regular starter of late, although uh, Misha Petrovic has been rotating his team considerably in recent weeks, searching for a winning formula that has proved elusive of late. Not since the remarkable 5-4 victory at Cashua Racehall on the 3rd of June, have they won a league match. In by Fukumori, comfortably dealt with by Junk. will be a free kick to follow there for Frontale. It's been a fairly frantic first five minutes. Fukumori again occupying a midfield role, as he has been in the last couple of games since reclaiming his starting spot. Against a former club today is Akitu Fukumori. J1 appearances for Kawasaki Frontale at the start of his career. It's almost a decade now since he left Todoroki. There's Yenika working it wider. Sasaki, an opportunity for him in the starting lineup. He'd come off the bench in each of the last five league matches. Only a fourth start of the season today. Most of his game time from the start, previously coming in the cup competitions, he started six games. As mentioned, they do have that Emperor's Cup quarter-final to come. Albrecht's Nagata on the Wednesday. chance of domestic silverware this season now. Thompson did qualify for the uh, knockout stages of the Levine League Cup competition. In their group behind Yokohama F. Marinos, who they face again in the quarter-finals. That one is also coming up just over a week's time. So the 6th of September, first leg of that last eight meeting. Desperate to have returned to winning ways in this division by then before they concentrate again on their cup commitments. Say a Baba. He's done really well here. It's the young centre back. Japanese under 23 international is in his uh, first season with the club since I moved from Tokyo Verdi. ground. Times he's come off the bench this year, only the third time that we've seen him in the starting 11. And the evidence of those changes made by Petrovic to try and transform their fortunes. Really got to grips with the departure of Takuro Kanako in the summer was their top scorer with eight goals this year before moving to Dinamo Zagreb in Croatia. Alone with an option to make it permanent. Pressure applied high here. Gaki on debut just about dealt with it. And another change in goal for Consadole this season. Played only four times actually in the second tier this year for Inter Trinita. But is a keeper of vast experience at the age of 34. In the club where he started his career. Only played twice though for Frontali in J1. Tagaki. Some story though. Turning tonight with Konsa. Been at the club for 10 days. 
replace Koki Oktani. Maureen Sugeno currently out injured. Begun the season as first choice. He's missed the last four matches now. Ancient little period of possession this for Konsa. Saya Baba into it. It's just going to run away from Suka. It's a threat in those sort of positions. Goals already this season. He got a career best four in the league last year. Up against Miki Yamane. That's going to be one of uh, a number of interesting individual duels to keep an eye on tonight. actually amongst the scorers for Toro and Iki's team last week when they lost by three goals to two at San Freche Hiroshima. Winning goal coming seven minutes into added time. Late heartbreak for Frontale. That's their last home match by goal to nil against Vissel Kope. <laughs> to win the ball back here. And Tasha Banada goes down. Initially by Kuramaya. Tashi Banada brought back into the starting lineup by Oniki, who made him club captain at the start of this season, but he's not been a, a regular since the opening months of the campaign. Lost his place, has been fit and available. It was a loss of form that saw him omitted from the starting lineup. He was sent off in the 4 3 defeat at Ponce in October of last year. To Tashi Banada. had their defensive issues this year as well. They've conceded the most goals of any team in the top half of the table. 31 through their first 24 fixtures. <laughs> so a losing run that they're currently on. Three straight defeats came after they had appeared to have found a bit more consistency. They'd only lost two of 12 in all competitions before the, uh, the last three games. A sluggish start to the season. They've always really been having to play catch up and they've never quite got close enough. The title race of the last day last year. Finishing just two points behind Yokohama F. Marinos. Won the title in four of the previous five years. That's why it is such a surprise, really, to see them down in ninth position into this game at this stage of this season building is going to be required. It's been one of the major criticisms really of the club this year is that the rebuilding process was uh, always likely, hasn't really been attended to, have been allowed to get all together maybe, they haven't replaced the number of their stars of recent seasons, That's something they've been so good at doing until this year, maybe. Tasha Banada helping it on. There will be a free kick to Fontali in a dangerous position. Challenge was by Fukumori. A lot in it, but he was left off balance, really, by the uh, turn from Yenike. Started every league game for Kawasaki Frontale this season. Got a score of 12 goals last year, has managed just the two so far this. He hasn't scored in his last 18 since the 4 3 victory in Sapporo. When these sides last met in April. He's called the free kick here, though. He committed forward for it. He's into an awkward area, hadn't uh, initially been dealt with. Seki couldn't capitalise, though. 
more than a little glance in the referee's direction as he went down. It's going to be a bit too much on that for Segoa. Is there anything in this, though? Kamori again, he was the player that conceded the free kick in the first place. Well, they be a little fortunate not to concede a penalty. Challenge on Sasaki. Has he got player and not ball looking at that? They're working it wider again. A little period this for Frontale as they look for Tesha Banader in the box. Very little in it in the opening quarter of an hour of the contest. Possession split almost uh, down the middle. And Frontale now just starting to create a few more moments of menace. Just Fernandez on the receiving end of that one though. Getting a little bit of respite for those in white. Straight start in J1 for the Brazilian. Sidelined at the start of the season, but has certainly returned to become a regular. Fifth year at the club now for the former Fluminense player. Space here for Suga. Lucas Fernandez once more. Kumori is going to have a hit. From the moment, really, that it left his boot, it was going to skip wide of the target. He's without a goal in J1 so far this season, and it's just the one last year. He has played a lot of his football at centre back, operating further forward under Petrovic at the moment. Take a goal this season in the cup competition, the Emperor's Cup. It's the first spot September of last year, his only J1 goal of 2022 in the victory against Jubilo Iwata. The responsibilities in this side, though, are certainly elsewhere. As Aramo gets his foot in, it's returned by Xiao Schmidt. Bamba back to Takagi. Options in attack here for Consa. Lucas Fernandez. Advanced role for him tonight. Think of uh, an out and out centre forward in the uh, starting lineup. It was the closest to goal on that occasion in this more advanced role. Couldn't quite apply the finishing touch to it. Some decent stuff there in the build up, did Concept. Just to rediscover their goal scoring form. It's easy to point to the departure of Kanako to uh, Dinamo Zagreb for the reason why they stopped scoring. He didn't actually manage a goal in his last five league games before departing for Croatia. Five in five at the time of his last goal in that 5-4 victory at Casual Race. Well, as I mentioned, they haven't won a league match since then. 3rd of June, that's time that they took maximum points. See of players all waiting in the penalty area for this corner kick. And swinging delivery. That's a dangerous one. Nobody really reacted to it. Should be able to clear. Right, keeps possession alive for Consa. Lucas Fernandez. 
run by Asano. Because of that, Frontale have the ball back with Wekazeka. Space for Kobayashi. Seki will leave it. Kobayashi had continued his run. Superchok in there, hoping to make the most of his return to the starting lineup today. Only a fifth start of the J1 season for the Thailand international. Off the bench in the, uh, the last three games. Second season now in Sapporo. of the Thailand stars after Chanathip Songkrasing, who of course played for both of these clubs. Parted Frontale earlier in the season for Patham United back home. After six and a half years playing in Japan, 18 months at Frontale. It's a good ball. It did fall at the feet of Superchop to have a strike. Jung right behind it, able to make a relatively routine save in the end the space to take it on first time here just opened up invitingly for Super Chok who has scored three goals in J1 this season he's got five in all competitions his coach Petrovic a little frustrated maybe that he didn't make more of that particular opening the move for Chanathit between these clubs was a domestic transfer record in the J League. That didn't quite work out as intended for him in Kawasaki. He'll be reunited with Fontali in the group stages of the Asian Champions League, by the way. The draw for which was made on Thursday. Fontali drawn into Group I against Olsen Hyundai of South Korea. Against the aforementioned Patham United of Thailand. That reunion with Chanathip. Malaysian opposition in Johor Darul as well. Competition kicks back in in the middle of September. Lucas Fernandez. And then the space for the shot, which was hit with real venom, but just wide of the target. in possession in dangerous territory in and around their own penalty area. The more it was, who struck it sweetly enough. Now the requisite accuracy though. But uh, four attempts at goal already from concert in the opening quarter of the contest. Response yet for Fontale at the other end. Jan Schmidt appears to have lost the protective headgear that he was sporting at the start of the game. So we see just how close that was. It was bending back, wasn't it, towards goal, just not quite quickly enough. Struck with real power, had Jung in trouble. And some concern for Toro Iniki at the drinks break. Temperature still topping at 30 degrees Celsius. In the Kawasaki evening in Kanagawa. Not so much the heat, but maybe more the humidity that is uh, the issue, over 80% at the moment. They're certainly requiring the water that they're able to take on board at this juncture, as well as the instructions that they're attempting to take on board. Well, no debut yet for Beffa Timbi Gomez. Most recent addition to the Kawasaki Frontale squad. He's uh, yet to be involved in the match day squad. He was a title winner in Turkey last season. I think, uh, before being brought in from Galatasaray, for whom he scored eight times in winning the Super League. The age of 38 now, the former French international. Still waiting for his uh, first appearance for Kawasaki Frontale, but he is here watching on. Swansea City, vast experience that 
he can bring to the party for the closing weeks of the season. As well as strengthening their squad for that upcoming Champions League campaign. group stages they uh, conclude in the middle of December so they've never got bef uh, beyond the quarter-finals of the Asian Champions League before Mawanos the reigning champions are our Reds and the deputants Fanfare Kofu first cup winners last season in the second tier all representing Japan in that continental competition as well Closed down. Gaining a just of, uh, judged to have been in the opposition half. As the flag went up. Especially Fukumori. Since everybody in the middle, a real chase on for Lucas Fernandez as well to reach and keep the danger alive here. This is by Tashi Banada. Particularly convincing one. Still got further work to do here. He's uh, landed his team in trouble, maybe. Free kick given right on the edge of the penalty area. The challenge on Yuya Asano. Good season for concert. The rest of the side, his form has maybe tailed off in recent weeks, but he's got nine goals to his name. The younger brother of Takuma. has earned Petrovic's team position of rich promise here from the free kick. Yakito Fukumori has gone to put the ball down, he's the one that fancies taking it. Straight starting goal for the vastly experienced junk. 38-year-old South Korean international he's in his eighth season now with Fontale. Might have some work to do here. The defensive wall just still in the process of being positioned in front of him. Oh, we certainly have plenty of time to think about this. And for the all-important breakthrough for a Consadoli side who scored just the once in their last five matches in the competitions. In the home draw a couple of weeks ago against Agantosu. as well to make their presence felt in the penalty area Fukumori sends it straight at the wall brilliant effort though from Super Chop oh it's a stunning strike how he caught hold of that and Super Chop Serachet on his return to the starting lineup scores a stunner for those from Sapporo Conser's recent goal drought ends here Wasn't a good free kick, really, initially from Fukumori. Straight at the wall, but it fell favourably for the superstar from Thailand. And he does the rest and some. It's his fourth league goal of the season on only his fifth start in J1 this year. Saki Frontale will have to do this the hard way. Trailing inside the opening half an hour. Wonderful goal from Superchop. Has come up with some big moments for his side this season, certainly. It's only in the last couple of months, really, where he's forced his way into uh, contention to start. Start came in a 1 0 home defeat against Alvarex uh, Nagata. Scored in J1 until coming off the bench at Shannon Belmare in the middle of May. 
Target today for the first time since defeat of Avispa Fukuoka. Start of last month. Certainly one to remember this evening. It's over now to Frontale to try and respond. Tasha Banada. Zhao Schmidt. They seem to have uh, discarded with the headgear, doesn't he? With uh, which he began the game. There's Yenica. They've lost it, briefly anyway. ball away far too easily really throughout the course of the season Kawasaki Frontale it's been one of their major issues this year they've been susceptible to teams that press them they certainly would have known that Kansa would always come here and press them that's what they do Fukumori comes out by Schmidt this time Chaos Sapporo and Amisha Petrovic. Consta for the preference for the expansive high transition game that they love to play. Also effective earlier in the season. Of course, it has always left them open at the back as well. It's more latterly have dried up. Super Chonk trying to set the record straight tonight in that respect. as it stands, chased, uh, staring at what would be the fourth successive defeat in J1. That hasn't happened since 2011. And they lost eight in a row in this division between July and September. 12 years ago. What can happen, of course, from here? the situation that they find themselves contemplating right now. So understandably, increasing in confidence after going in front. Nakamura. This is Baba. For Suga to Fukumori. Say Baba has stayed forward. Goal scorer super chop. Get back from Suga. Long period of possession this for those in white. See the confidence with which they're playing. Complete contrast really to the nature of their defeat just seven days ago. And Kyoto Sanga. No. Potential problem for Sasaki, who is uh, in at left back today for the regular in that role, the Borisato. And started the previous 12 matches. Again at the goal. Caught it flush. Wonderful initial reaction, or lack of one, really, wasn't there, from Super Chock before stunting the celebrations. Rather more modest from he than uh, the teammates that soon surrounded him. Niki certainly knows the significance of that goal, and just how much tougher it has made his team's task tonight. Still yet to see a shot from Frontali, seven of them at the other end, telling something of the early story. That is now reflected on the scoreboard to a certain extent. Twice came from behind last week, Frontale at San Frecce Hiroshima, losing to that winning goal seven minutes into stoppage time. From Mitsuta. Joe Schmidt. I guess she was quickly crowded out of it.
Okamura. He scored in that 4-3 defeat against Frontale in April. Remains his only goal of this season. He started every game, he's played 90 minutes for them in all but two of those matches. The Hachi Okamura there. And Tanaka alongside him at the back have uh, both been ever present in this division. Fourth different goalkeeper this year, though, behind them tonight on debut for Hagagi. So far, it's been a pretty quiet one for him against his former club. Recently let uh, Gu Seung Young leave on loan, South Korean, former first choice as he was earlier in the season as well. To Kyoto Sangri wasn't eligible to play against his parent club last week. Gaki effectively really has been his replacement. Forward by Baba, not a bad ball either here, Super Chok. Oh, and he's uh, turned from goal scorer to provider this time. And Konsa have got their second goal. Two up in this first half. The pressure reaping further reward. And again, Superchop very much at the heart of it. Just had the presence of mind here to pick out Komai in front of goal. His immediate reaction was to look to see if there was going to be an offside flag. As he just got to it ahead of Kuramaya. Yoshiaki Komai appears to be reveling though in this more advanced role that he's operating in tonight. Pushed further forward in the absence of uh, an out and out starting centre forward. It was a relatively straightforward finish for his third league goal of the season. was sidelined with uh, a serious knee injury, a cruciate ligament problem last year. Missed the start of this season because of it. At 17 straight starts now. A really important goal in doubling this lead for Consadole. Beaten 3-0 on their travels a week ago. Two up at the home of Frontale. Champions in four of the last six seasons. Very much now staring at the prospect of a fourth straight defeat in J1 for the first time in a dozen years. Just when they had appeared to find their form at home after a sluggish start to this season by winning four on the bounce at Todoroki. This would be, should it stay like this, a third successive home league defeat for Frontale. Here since April, still back to back defeats. Masaka scored four here, We're winning 4 3 at the start of the month. So Kobe needed just the one a fortnight ago. Konsa already have two tonight. Superchok scored the first and set up the second for Komai. Goal separated by eight minutes in this first half. How Frontale needs something back before the break. Wakazaka, he's been their major goal threat of late, scored in three of his last four games. It's good ground here, trying to cut it back towards Segawa. Good point four for him, it's cleared only as far as Tashi Banada. Now Xiao Schmidt, Yamane joining in as well, floats it in dangerously. Agagi did well, the goalkeeper to punch it clear. a bit more of a response from Frontale this time. Didn't really see one when they fell 1-0 behind. The session of the second has sparked them into action. Has the damage been done? Jim Schmidt again pinging it forward.
Hawks that did twice lead in the previous meeting in April. Home game at the Sapporo Dome. Losing it four minutes from time. Great season that they've met in J1 from 2017 onwards. Entirely beaten in only two of 13 meetings since then. Might be about to change here. So having just one of 13 visits to Kawasaki. Just to remind you, the city that they were initially based in. First formed as the Toshiba Club 88 years ago here in the Kanagawa Prefecture. Been in Sapporo since 1996. And the local government were keen to base a professional team. Makazaka. There's Yenika. And again. This ball is going to be cut out. Not only that. It's uh, had to lead to the counter-attack because Fernandez has covered good ground and plenty of power in the shot as well that followed. Straight at Chung on that occasion. Side of the South Korean and the keeper might have been in trouble. It all came from that period of pressure at the other end. Quickly, because Fernandez was able to go through the gears and turn defence into attack. He scored a couple in the cups this season, but it's Still without a lead goal so far this year. He managed last season. Shots now from Sapporo, six on target. Still without a solitary effort at the other end. Comes into that category. Which would suggest this uh, healthy 2-0 lead for Konsa is uh, merited on the balance of play. Space here for Wakazaka. Jean Schmidt. Regular starter again in uh, recent months, having surprisingly been omitted from the starting lineup more often than not in the opening weeks of the season. It's a very disappointing start to the season for Fontale, from which they have never really recovered with their first 11 games in all competitions this year. In front of Kobayashi. Takagi dealt with it comfortably enough. Big opportunity for him. And he started just those four matches that I mentioned in the second tier earlier this season. Signed an 18-month deal to move to Sapporo. Sorts of space again here for Suga to bring it down. Suga spilled by the goalkeeper, but he made sure he got behind it. Did Jung, it didn't quite come for Super Chop this time. The less favoured right foot that he had to take it on, really. Thank you, Suga. So looks to match last year's career best four goals in this division. Out of sight by now. Those in white. There's Okamura. A lengthy trip as it always is, of course. For concert. About 870 miles. Southwest of Kawasaki. The island of Hokkaido. suffered in recent weeks but they're enjoying themselves just at the moment continuing to keep the pressure on here super chop it's the first time in nine j1 matches that they've scored more than once in a game by 
Jainika that time. His last eight matches had yielded only five goals in total. Contrast that to the 17 that they'd scored in the previous five. Came here on the back of three successive away league defeats. They lost just one of 14 on their travels in J1 before that, dating back to August of last year. the response that Petrovic wanted to see from his side in this first half off the back of last week's disappointment in Kyoto. Fine footwork, wasn't there a few moments ago from Wakazaka? Moments like that have been very isolated for Frontale in this first half. Back to Baba. Takagi. Confident, uh, confident and comfortable in possession, say a Baba. Something back into the side. Super shock. And it's actually going to come here for Lucas Fernandez. Showed a bit too much of it to Sasaki. Still has further work to do to get this clear. Assistance provided by Zhao Schmidt, pinned back in their own penalty area. The susceptibility to uh, the high press this season, this is a, a risky policy from Fontale. So going to three added minutes, by the way, at the end of this first half. Fukumori. And again, it's Aronara. Is stretching for it. Third for Consadole at this stage. Take an awful lot of the pressure off in the second half. Well on their way to a vital victory. And to win this, they in a point of Fontale in the table. Fontale in danger, slipping into the bottom half of the standings as it remains at the moment. Most unthinkable at the start of their campaign in which they were again expected to be title challengers as they usually are in recent generations anyway. Further question marks over the future of Toro Aniki, whether he will be the one to oversee the rebuild that is quite clearly necessary. Todoroki. Put it in the bank, maybe, from the remarkable success that he's had with this side. Foul this time is on Wakizaka. On the arrow note. Shot from behind, and then a, a pull of the shirt as well for good measure, right in front of the referee. Arano has been cautioned. His name is the first taken by referee of Carbeck tonight. So here comes the free kick. Jim Schmidt. Just uh, touched into his path by uh, Minami. Doesn't quite fall for Sasaki been accurate enough in that part of the pitch in the first half. Niki's got a big job on his hands. The team talk that will follow very shortly. That's to try and inspire some sort of response, just as Petrovic has managed with his team today. Coming here on the back of that desperately disappointing display seven days ago. Half that has all gone the way of the visitors. Consadole Sapporo in front, thanks to a fine strike from Superchok. And it was he who then shortly afterwards set up the second for Yoshiaki Komai as well. Eight minutes between the two goals, assembling a comfortable cushion for Consadole at half time.
And Fontale, as it stands, staring at a fourth straight league defeat for the first time in a dozen years. Big second half ahead for them at Todoroki. At the break, it's Kawasaki Frontale nil, Fontanoli Sapporo two.
So welcome back, almost set for the start of the second half at Todoroki. We are, perhaps predictably, going to see changes from the home side. Mitchell Petrovic will be uh, delighted with uh, what his team have produced so far, but uh, a couple of changes for Toro and Niki. Tatsuki Seko is on for Zhao Schmidt in midfield. And Marcinio replaces uh, Yasuki Seko at an attack. Marcinio, the top scorer last season, hasn't been able to replicate that sort of form as yet this year. On his way back from another injury issue, but on for the entirety of the second half, with Fontale trailing by two. His team very much up against it. Attempting to avoid what would be a fourth straight league defeat. Has made his move. Coming off the bench at half time. The seventh straight game. Marcinio may be even more notably called for as well. The second half will have in store. Turnaround required by the home side. Kawasaki Frontale that get the second half underway. Not stacked against them, trailing by two goals to nil. Didn't really carry any sort of attacking threat in those first 45 minutes. So Toru Aniki has mixed it up. Senio has yet to have an impact really this season. No goals for a player who scored 12 times in this division last year. Injuries have played a part in that. It's a third straight appearance for him off the bench since his most recent return to fitness. 15 goals he got in all competitions last year in making the J1 best 11. He's not the only one for Frontale that hasn't hit the same sort of heights this time around. But needs to change if they're to salvage something today. So, it's worth uh, mentioning at this juncture, have uh, Leandro Damiao back available on the bench. He's missed the last couple of matches. He's also been in and out because of injury this year. Another hugely important player in the successes of recent seasons. And we'll see him at some stage as well tonight. All given away to Arano. It's Bapa. Because Fernandez. Arano again, plenty in support of the attack. Sivichok working it wider. It's picked up, if anything, in the fashion that the first half finished, really. Niki's team on the back foot. Fernandez has been heavily involved throughout. Here's again. The Brazilian will get the free kick. He's taken over really that uh, roll on the right to the departure of the top scorer, Kanako. So important for them in the first half of the season. It's down the other flank that they progress here. Suga and Superchok, that combination has been impressive tonight. Three for them this time around. Sasaki. Okay, for Kuramaya. really is on Fontale in the second half, not yet had the 
opportunity to get Marcinho into it. He will win the free kick here. It's his third year at the club now, the Brazilian. Patrice have restricted him to just the eight start so far. It's the fourth time for him off the bench, last three in a row, as I mentioned. He has the qualities capable but sparking something for his side that they are in such need of right now. It's Tashi Banada. Kuramaya. Back tonight after three games out through injury. Four times capped Japanese international. Senior will try and get on the end of this. The bounce of the ball actually did favour him. Against Tanaka. And the decision goes against him. Just went a little too soon. And we are talking the merest of margins. Looks like did go up at the end of this passage of play. Seen the replay there, it looked, be it a tight call, the correct call. Such is the pace that he has in positions like that, he perhaps didn't need to go quite so early. Lead and again by Superchop. It's Alano. She's on the counter here, Marcinho is the target. Can he keep his feet? Not quite. Well, Maya have found him. Marcinho then appealing for the free kick. It's not forthcoming from referee Okabe. Totale furious here. So have a look at this. And he's finding a little bit of space, Marcinho. Uh, probably nothing in that. the first one, if anything that's where the free kick would have come as Okamura came across, it's a little different doesn't it, whichever angle you look at, but they need something really to spark them even if it is a moment of frustration, a perceived sense of injustice, it might just help them impose themselves on the game, see it does look to have made a difference, the complaints are continuing on the touchline, need to mention the video assistant referee yet tonight at Sushi Kamimura has been having a look at it and that second angle that we saw did suggest there might have been more in it so across to the monitor comes Takutu Okabe the defender could be in trouble after all Pretty lengthy look at this. He's certainly nowhere near the ball. That's the, uh, the major issue that goes against him. He did his very best to ride the challenge to keep his feet. Let's have a look at it in, uh, in real time again here. He's certainly clumsy. Action is going to be taken. Let's find out. Reaching for the red. That might just change matters. Red card on review. Nakamura sent off early in the second half here. And this is why. some debate certainly wasn't given at the time and in real time you could understand why but having seen the replay as the referee eventually did on the monitor he has come 
to a different conclusion. Kachi Okamura sent off. That will end his ever-present record this season. He's started every game in J1. He's played the full 90 in all but two of them. He's a goal scorer for Concer against Frontale in the club's last meeting in April. He's at the centre of the story again for very different reasons tonight. Clearly feels very hard done by. Continuing the complaints. Such a, an important player for Conte this campaign. And what is his uh, third season at the club since he made the step up from JT? Plan B being rapidly readied by Misha Petrovic. Still a fairly comfortable two-goal cushion, but this will offer Frontale renewed hope of getting back into the game, certainly. Laura makes way eventually. Sent off on review. But you do have to uh, have a degree of sympathy with him, I think. It was clumsy. Probably clumsy at worst. Initially looked to have got away with it. Red on review is a big call. So Petrovic will turn to his bench as part of this plan B and bring on uh, Miyazawa, the club captain. His experience could be useful in a situation like this. the free kick eventually from Wakazaka for Frontale floated in not one that they can make the most of into the right sort of area here amazing to meet it was Kuramaya up from the back but the uh, nearest of touches really has glanced it wide to be seen whether whether that red will be a game changer or not <laughs> to say initially they, they didn't look to be much in it Not more that we saw on the, the replay but whether that merited a red or not it's very much up for debate so here comes the change. Introduction of uh, Miyazawa off the bench. He's going to take the place of Yuya Asano. He's operated really on the fringes of the game today. The captain comes on. He takes over the armband as well in the process. 16 seasons with them now. Seven of those were in J2 before being an important part of the team that won promotion. 220 times in the top flight. There's Miyazawa. Paul Letterly, he's on. Reorganisation required. And they had started their second half pretty strongly as well. Momentum checked in that respect by the Red. short of talking points when these two get together. Fontale make their numerical advantage count in the second period. They're set about doing that soon, you suspect, if they are. To maintain the belief that a turnaround is possible from here. Might not necessarily work in their favour, of course. 
see teams toil against 10. Really conscious nature to try and sit back and defend the lead. That's what they might be more tempted to do now after the sending off of Okamura. back behind the ball here. Salwa's first involvement was to win that one. Chase on for Superchok. Saseki <laughs> trying to link with Marcinio. Almost an hour in, Fontali have had just the one shot at goal so far, and that was off target. Can they find their threat? Certainly have looked more of a threat since the introduction of Marcinio at the break. Can't take any chances with his fitness. He's been back available after that hamstring problem for the last few weeks now. was that he was uh, briefly thrown back into the starting lineup a little bit too early, a little bit ahead of schedule. It's causing concert some issues in this second half. Which there, of course, Lucas Fernandez won as well. She's still feeling the effects of. that as well, non pride. It's a valiant attempt, wasn't it, from Fernandez to keep it in to make something of it? And just got out of play. It's a pure as if the steady departure to Europe of plenty of talents groaning. Kawasaki is finally beginning this year to catch up with Frontale. Recent seasons to replace the likes of Kayoro Mitoma. Go into Kura as well, Koji Miyoshi, and Messi Morita among them. And they couldn't quite reach that. Certainly, Miss Shogo Taniguchi was such an important part of last season's side. They do still have Leandro Dami out. He's back available again after injury on the bench tonight. Is this uh, tailor-made for him, maybe, to come on and make a difference against the 10? The transfer window has uh, only just closed 10 days ago in Japan. Here's Massinio trying to pick his way through. are set effectively for the rest of the season now. She bounded it. Keep it down. Left it for Yamane. Well, there's a bit more attacking intent there. There needed to be, there had to be. There was always likely to be, I guess, but still not yet the accuracy at the end of it. Clearing the crossbar from Yamane. Does have a couple of goals this season, including last week. San Freche. 16 times capped Japanese international who went to the World Cup with them in Qatar. Hasn't been capped since then by his country. He's done every game for Fontale this year. It hasn't maybe been at his consistent best. Zaka. Has been a goal for an of late. 
six for the season now. In the last four games. At the stage of this one, where you would expect Tono Aniki maybe to make another alteration. Sada getting a bit of a foothold, Saseki. Yoshi Palader trying to trick her way through. Pose themselves a bit more against the 10. Not creating the quality of opening yet that they need. Still time for that to change. That card has restricted Conta's own attacking ambitions somewhat. Through necessity, really. So let's see what Lucas Fernandez was uh, trying there, just blocked off by Saseki. Ends up on the running track. Is mainly used for football now, the Todoroki Stadium. It's just over 26,000, but has uh, maintained that athletics track. It's been owned by the city of Kawasaki. It was first built back in the early 1960s, this arena. The yellow card is out here. It maybe had been coming. Two. Uh, Challenges on Lucas Fernandez. A couple of them more laterally by Sasaki, so he's into the book. Montale player cautioned by referee of Carbe tonight. Tasha Banada. Zeka. Hasn't really influenced the game as much as he has been more latterly. One of the standout players in a difficult stage of the season for them. Tasha Banada. Kuramaya striding forward from centre back. Sasaki's he's got plenty to aim for in the middle. Didn't get the cross away quickly enough. Tasha Banada to keep it in though. of those that have ventured forward has stayed forward here. Yena go wider for Yamane. And with Akihiro Yenika. Towards Marcinio. Risky, and they're back in the game. Wakazaka continues his rich vein of form in front of goal. And as we approach the midway point of this second half, Kawasaki Frontale half the deficit. They get their goal against the 10, and they renew hopes of salvaging more from the match. It all came about after the ball was given away by Takaki inside his own penalty area. Lapse of concentration, really, from Miyazawa, who wasn't expecting it. And Yazuto Wakazaka does the rest, thumps it in. Takes full advantage. Midway point of this second half. From Tale back in it with their first shot on target of the game. It had been a very quiet debut for Shun Tagagi against the club where he started his career. All of a sudden, though, he finds himself in the spotlight. And it's that misunderstanding between the goalkeeper and his captain Miyazawa that came back to cost them very quickly. Whether it will cost them much more in the overall context of the contest, we shall find out in its closing quarter. It is a different game now, all right. Conscious lead now with 10 after that sending off of Okamura. All of a sudden looks a very slender one. It's a good finish. Still had a bit to do and he picked out the corner with precision. Good work, Izaka. 
Finishing was gifted to them in the opponent's penalty area, but he still had to make it count. Scored at Vissel Cope, scored in the uh, defeat here against Campo Reseca in that 4-3, and he scored last week at San Francesco Hiroshima as well. Zanka's fine form continues, seven for the season in J1 now. Timely drinks break for both teams to collect their thoughts before going into what could be now an absorbing climax to the contest. Very much back in the balance again. So they're going to have to uh, really dig in here if they're to hold on to what they have. Still no clean sheet for Consadole. He takes it their own downfall really in that respect. They've only managed one shutout in the last 28 games before today in all competitions. And that sequence will now be extended. Shut out the opposition in any of their last 12 matches now. They're having to defend deep again here. They're coming under sustained pressure now. Sasaki slips it through for Marcinho. He will stand up the cross, which was there to be hit. It was miss here, but it falls favourably for Sasaki to score. And just like that, Frontale are back on terms. Two swift goals either side of the drinks break. And it's a very different picture inside Todoroki right now. Well, he was involved initially in the build-up as well with Sasaki in that combination with Marcinho. And then he followed it up to find himself the furthest forward and score his first goal of the season. And only his fourth league start of the season. Wasn't going to spurn such an opportunity from that sort of range, was he? An unlikely goal scorer, maybe. But such a significant strike. And what a dramatic turnaround. Two goals in the space of four minutes from their first two attempts on target of the game. And now, Frontale will fancy going on to win this. Immediately, they have some defending to do first. Lucas Fernandez flicks it forward. In there to be hit by Tanaka as well. Didn't really do so with conviction. Marcinho was caught. He'll get the free kick. Tali still have 20 minutes or so to try and go on and win it. Well, they can't out for the challenge on uh, Marcinho. Brandished in the direction of Lucas Fernandez. Oh, the frustration may be that one. Sending off of Okamura now does look to have been a game-changer, although credit to Frontale for making it count. Vince Sasaki, he wouldn't have gone down there in that position unless he had to, having gone in front of his player. He's going to be booked this time. With Sasaki still down. Fernandez won the ball initially there. He's only just got into the book himself. Before being halted unfairly by Yamane. Fontale may have felt that there was a foul by Fernandez in the first place. Started that particular little passage of play. There's confirmation of the caution for the Fontale right back. He's expected to play that more inverted central role, slotting into midfield from fullback, and has at times done so this season, but maybe nowhere near as much as many might have expected him to. Well, score is Sasaki, who's stayed down here. There's some concern for him. He scored on what was just his second ever appearance, his first start for the club, 
in the 2-0 victory at Kashima Antlers in February of last year. Not until tonight had he scored the second goal of his senior career. Is his part played? Sight of a stretcher would suggest as such. Certainly been an eventful return to the team tonight for Asi Sasaki's playing only second season out of university. He started three of the four, first four league games this year, but hadn't started another one until tonight. Came off the bench in six of the last seven. Diatono that will be summoned instead. Will be a third change made by Kawasaki Frontale. Promising that he didn't necessarily need the stretcher. They have their belief back, although, in fairness to the fans, they've maintained most of that noise throughout the majority of the evening, despite the difficult situation that their side found themselves in. So the change will happen here. Sasaki's not able to continue. The goal scorer makes way for Diatono. That will mean a little bit of a reshuffle as well. An attacking player thrown into the fray. He's been a regular off the bench recently, the former Honda FC player. His third season here. All that Sasaki can do. He made a big impact on his return to the starting lineup already. stoppage means that we will have a fair bit more to go yet than the closing quarter of an hour that remains of the 90. There's Lucas Fernandez. Given up on turning the tables again, getting themselves back in front. More attacking intent since the concession of that second goal. Such a difficult balancing act that they have here. With the player short. It looks like it may well be nine league games without a win for Considale after all. Super Choc might get it back again here and does to bend one in towards the far corner. Too many in the way. Back in by Tanaka. Nienega will try and pick up the pieces for Frontale. Not gone nine without a win in the league since. Uh, August and September of 2020. Consadole. What's the danger now? They would match that. Marcinio. Away from Lucas Fernandez. Rapidly through the gears. Yeniga takes over. Finds Yamane. Game. Wakazaka kick started the comeback. The first of Frontales, too. Senior is going to come comfortably through to Shun Tagaki. We're content to let that continue. It was a, a well timed challenge. Tono Got his toe to the ball first. He's the target in the middle when it's returned in his direction. Miyazawa away. Wakazaka. Tashi Banada. Captain has it again here. Touching there for Seko. It's all from Tale now. Sustaining the pressure. Looking to pick a way through. Ahead 
and continued his run. It's aimed in his direction over the top. Here it goes again. They still can't get it clear though. Comsa here. There might be an injury issue as well for Comsa there, feeling the pace here. I oh, know it was on the receiving end of that. There's a spring in the step from the home side. They believe now that they can go on and win it. All of a sudden, they are the dominant force in possession. They are the ones applying all of the pressure. And they will make another change. Going to bring on another forward as well. Niashiro will come on. Maybe no surprise that it's Yu Kobayashi whose place he will take. That's a like for like change up top in terms of the position that he will play. Third straight appearance off the bench for Miyashiro. Been a regular starter up until the, uh, the last few weeks. Kobayashi only just returning today after a lengthy absence was always unlikely, really, to go the distance. We'll see a concert change as well. It's going to be the end of the evening for Arano. It's in uh, clear discomfort. And can't continue. Shingo Omori is going to be his replacement, and this is notable. This is a debut in his first senior season out of university for the uh, former under-19 international. Omori is on. He joined the club in February. Have to be patient for an opening, which is now provided by Petrovic for the conclusion here. situation that he steps into as well. Tashibanada get it back again. Seeing plenty of it just at the moment. Rossinio. Tashi Banada. Tono, Monsignor, Wakazaka, Yenaga. Goes awkwardly. Monsignor trying to, uh, to bring it down. Tono actually flashed it back, really, from whence it came. But he could quite react in the middle. Tale very much on the front foot now. Not fancying their chances of winning this after all. Some of the leakiest defensive record away from home in the division. Having to try and withstand this pressure. Satisfied that this corner kick can be taken. A possible handball, maybe. Which didn't take too long. So, corner kick to come then for Frontale. Pretty much everybody forward for the home side. Tasha Banada! Deflection could have taken it anywhere, it carries it behind for another corner kick. Always likely to strike it there when he fell at his feet. It's the captain. It's good at the start of the season in their home defeat against F. Marinos, but not since. In goes the corner kick again from the other side. Again, it's out as far as Tashi Banada. With Wakazaka. Responsibility for the majority of the set pieces. Seco. So, with everybody back behind the ball, deep inside their own half, having been two up, they would surely settle for a point now. Needs to be seen whether they will be able to. Hang on to it, though. Certainly a more than an element of doubt about that. 
just at the moment. Dramatically, things have changed in this second half. Spencer scored twice in the space of eight first half minutes. Either side of the half hour mark. Seems a long time ago for them right now, doesn't it? Here's Marcinio. He was away from Fernandez. Tashi Banadis, and still. Fast feet in the build-up, but not quite the finish to match. Oh, they're getting closer. More and more frequently as well. For Frontale, Marcinio did beautifully in the build-up. So did Tashi Banada up until that final touch. Coming out from under his feet really quickly. Wonderful balance, wrong-footed the Consadole defence, but he couldn't quite finish it off, couldn't make them pay. Not this time. Still time, albeit not an awful lot of it. As far as Toro Aniki is concerned, that clock will be running down pretty rapidly right now. Very really good view of that. And to, uh, to continue, Come to still have the ball. It's a long way, Tashi Banada reaching it ahead of Lucas Fernandez. And forward goes Marcinio with options either side. He takes it on himself. It's almost as soon as it left his boot. Here's Jenega. Back from Yamane. Swinging it in. Inviting me, Eshiro, to challenge for it. Shantatanaka standing his ground. The flag then goes up at the end of that. Just offside, wasn't he? Tosomi Yashiro has got six goals this season. Managed eight last year on loan at second Tosu. The injuries to others has opened the door for him this season for Frontali, finally getting a chance with his parent club. Only in the last few weeks where he's been dropped back down to the bench by Oniki. Options in attack now with the return to fitness of Andre Dami out. Kobayashi, but it remains to be seen for how long the stop start nature of their season so far. Seco forward. Yashiro spinning to try and strike it. Well, we've had seven goals, remember, in each of the last three meetings between these clubs. It doesn't necessarily appear as if we've been shortchanged tonight, does it? And they've shared the four so far. Certainly wouldn't rule out a fifth goal of the game. Much more likely right now that it would be Frontale to score it. Zaka wider for Tashi Banada. He's everywhere just at the moment. An awful lot of ground. Maya. Trying to trick away through. Tashi Banada keeps the pressure on. Yenega. Massinio. Quiet. Looks sharp though, doesn't he, Marcinio? They come again with Yenega. Back to Yenica, switching the play, space for Yamane. Here he is trying to get the shot away. Massinio. Balloons over the bar in the end, they're getting closer and closer. Also getting closer to the end of the 90. Really dictating the play. Applying all of the pressure up to 68% possession now that just keeps going up that particular statistic but still they've not been able to get the third goal that they have threatened almost ever since they scored the second
They will bring the number nine into the action, though. Leandro Damiao. He's played just five times in J1 this season because of injury. He started just once. He will be brought off the bench on his uh, latest return. Changes for both for the closing moments here. It's absorbing stuff at the end, isn't it? There will be some story if Leandro Damiao were to have the final say and settle it. You wouldn't put it past him. 23 goals he got in 2021. Just the five last season. Fit still has a really important part to play. And take the place of Jenica. 27-year-old replaced by the 34-year-old. Petrovic plotting a couple of alterations of his own here for concert. Yuki Kobayashi is going to come on in place of Daiki Suga. He had started the last couple of games, actually, Kobayashi, before dropping back down to the bench today. Took an injury against Fontale earlier in the season. Kept him sidelined for a significant spell. Just trying to freshen things up for the finish. And we'll bring on Kazuki Fukai as well here in place of Fukumori. Going to get to start in J1 this year. Hasn't been in the squad for the last seven matches, but is back available and has come on for the uh, conclusion. Fifth appearance as a substitute this season. His influence waning maybe the longer the game has gone on. So I saw amongst all of those substitutions, the number 11 come up on the fourth official's board. That's the amount of added time there will be. So this is far from finished. 11 more minutes yet. Fontale will fancy it, certainly. Having seen that. A great surprise, though, given the... Uh, Stoppages in this second half, all the, the drama that we've had so far, it will be extended. There's Lucas Fernandez. Just still continuing to look an isolated threat. Not entirely given up on winning the game themselves either yet. Kobayashi first involved but it threatened to uh, open up for him immediately Tanaka because Fernandez Foucault was in there as well having also just come on Kobayashi immediately involved here's uh, Lucas Fernandez again looking for the free kick I think fell in front of the referee immediately looked in his direction and was told to get up again just a spin away from Miyazawa. A little spell since the substitutions for Consadale Sapporo. Always delivers entertainment, this particular fixture. We wondered whether that would uh, continue tonight, given the respective poor runs that both clubs have been on. It's certainly been very watchable there, and it remains right in the balance. It's going to go to the wire. Lakazaka. Tashi Banadette teasing it forward for Marcinio, and getting it back again. Meet both centre backs joining in with the attack as well. All operating really for Frontale in the opposition half right now. There's Kuramaira again. Tashi Banada links it forward towards Marcinio. Nearly but not quite for the Brazilian. Much from behind. Tashi Banada will bring about the free kick. 
Take him quickly. Needs must really if Montale are to go on and win this. As they feel that they can. Ominami. Wakazaka. Was Yamane in towards Leandro Damiao. Marcinho's there as well. Both Brazilians battling for it. Tashi Banada tries to return it. Everybody back in white. Seco, well defended this time. Seco did well to hold that up. He had to press his little by way of support in the immediate vicinity. Now here goes Seco, skipping into space. Miki Yamane. Kento Teshi Banada. Miyashiro, he will cut it back. Had to be dealt with and was good defending. Couldn't take the chance in that part of the pitch. Wakazaka using all of his experience. Ball standing over the corner conceded by Miyazawa. The goalkeeper's ball, though it is. Confident take from uh, Takagi. Dangerous territory once more. Senior was in space. The pass wasn't precise enough to find him, though. Instead, Lucas Fernandez for Consa. Actually, then taking over and getting the ball back here from Fukai as the substitutes combine. Yashi continued his run. Gets on the end of it. Tasha Banada was with him, making it more difficult than it otherwise might have been. But Yuki Kobayashi with an opportunity here. Very much against the balance of play. He couldn't capitalise upon. Straightforward by any stretch, but in the context of what Konser have created in this second half, it was an opening. Now they have to uh, remain switched on at the other end. Marcinho able to pick a way through in the middle. And they actually tried to provide some sort of respite, some sort of outball for his team. Still look really only halfway through the... 11 added minutes here. Towards the Andre Damiao, the goalkeeper's made a bit of a meal of that. It's fortunate. Takagi. Coming to claim it and to collect it as, as defence would have expected him to, but didn't really deal with it having got there. This is if the goalkeeping issues for Concer are going to continue. Different custodian of the campaign. Will we get a winner here? In the heat and humidity of Kawasaki. Draw really wouldn't do too much for either side. The ones that both are on. Three match losing sequence for from Tallinn, having been 2 0 behind at half time. They may well have taken this, but. They don't go on and win it from here. They'll see it as a missed opportunity, potentially. So they've been 2 0 up. Let's see their winless run stretch to nine games in the league. They would be the ones happy enough to settle now for a share of the spoils, I'm sure. Kuramaya. Not necessarily entirely intentionally, but they keep hold of it. Or Minami. It's Wakazaka. Something to try and aim for here. Miyashiro, is it going to bounce? Still not away yet. Goalkeeper punches that one clear, took it off the head of Damiao, but it's returned goalwards and blocked away and behind. Miyashiro with an opening. Kawasaki Frontale applying the pressure in pursuit of this dramatic come-from-behind victory. 
They've got three further minutes of added time to find it. Conceded a winner, remember, seven minutes into added time at San Frecce Hiroshima a week ago. They turn the tables in every respect tonight. Kazeka's corner. Straight at the goalkeeper who opts to punch it clear. Looked like he had the time to catch it. It's a very precious commodity though right now. Safely through to Takagi. doesn't he, Leandro Damiao, they've been looking for him at every opportunity since his late introduction into the action. Top score at the London Olympics in 2012, Damiao, as Brazil took silver. The opposite end of his career, but still such an important component for his club. experienced coaches. Nobody's taken charge of more J1 games than uh, Misha Petrovic. So Maniki winning the title in four of his first five years in charge of Kawasaki Frontale. And both really going through it on the touchline at the moment. There's Tachi Banada. Marcinio. By Tachi Banada towards Leandro Damiao. Underneath it was Seco. Or Minami. For Yamane, it almost came his way. Still able to try and pick up the pieces here. Kurumaya going for glory. A little too ambitious as it turned out from the centre back. Feeling the pace on his return from injury. Did score a stoppage time winner at F Marados. At the start of the month. So you repeat the trick this time. That one was a scrappy effort, touched in on the line. This time he went from distance for something spectacular, wasn't able to find it. Played his part in this second half comeback. Could be though that they come up a little bit short in pursuit of all three points. from Marcinio. There is the full-time whistle. Well, what a story. Spirited second half showing from Kawasaki Frontale as they battled back from two behind. But they would have fancied going on to win it against the 10. They've come up just short in that respect. They do end their three-match losing run in J1 despite being 2-0 behind at half-time when Superchok scored one and made another for Komai, but the sending off of Okamura early in the second half changed the narrative, certainly. Konsu were left hanging on. They conceded twice in the space of four minutes. Wakazaka and Sasaki scoring with Frontale's first two attempts on target of the game. But their efforts to go on and win it have fallen just short. Konsa hold on for a hard-earned point full-time at Todoroki. Kawasaki Frontale 2, Consadoli Sapporo 2. Fast and furious, frenetic throughout. So many talking points really to uh, reflect upon. Just the four goals shared between these two today after each of the previous three meetings. Saw seven scored, but we were certainly not short chains. We were not short of drama. In the end, though, it's a result that probably won't satisfy either side. Consa coming away with their winless sequence extended to nine games despite being 2-0 up at half-time. But Frontale left to think of what might have been having got themselves back on level terms against the 10 and being the side that applied all the late pressure in pursuit of the winning goal that ultimately they ran out of time to score. Marcinio made a difference after his half-time introduction. It was he that was brought down by Okamura for the red card given only on the video review. 
wasn't spotted by referee Akabe at the time. He was advised to come to the monitor, and he made a really big call in reaching for the red, much disputed by those in white, certainly. Konsa conceded twice in the space of four minutes either side of the, uh, the water break. But Petrovic's team showed character to dig in after that. He's still got a bit to say maybe to the officials as well, but he will be pleased with the spirit of his side to ensure that they didn't end up empty-handed because at one point that very much looked a, a real possibility with Frontale on the front foot. Let's get some reaction for you. え、形になってしまって、そのミスから失点したりとか、まあ狙いは背後だったりとかそういったところであったんですけど、まあ優先順位が少し逆になってしまったりとかそういったシーンがあったのでハーフタイムではうまく修正しようっていうことを話し合ってました